Hi guys, welcome back to Wigs with Steph. I'm Steph. Today I wanted to be really vulnerable and open and tell you a little bit about my Graves disease, hyperthyroidism, and hair loss and why ultimately I created this channel. You see, the thing is when I was a kid, I had really beautiful hair. Going from having nice hair, luscious locks, to losing it is really upsetting or can be upsetting for a lot of people. And so from my perspective with my own story, it was very upsetting for me. So I've had Graves disease, hyperthyroidism as a symptom for at least eight years now. I could have had it before that, but just wasn't diagnosed. And that came with so many symptoms. In its worst stage, it was just really, really bad. For those of you who don't know, Graves disease hyperthyroidism is an autoimmune disease. It affects your thyroid. And a lot of people, you know, they're familiar with hyperthyroidism. There's also hypo, but not a lot of people talk about Graves disease. Graves disease, the name is just horrible. Like, why does it have to be a grave, right? Like, that just sounds so bad. So for example, you could have hyperthyroidism and not have Graves disease, or you could have Graves disease and hyperthyroidism as sort of like a symptom. So even though I'm in remission now, meaning I've managed to, get healthy, get off all of my medication for thyroid, I am still left with Graves' disease because Graves' disease doesn't go away. When you're diagnosed with Graves' disease, it's something that you always have and you're always trying to manage. So you're constantly looking after your health, you're eating well, you're doing all these things so that your hyperthyroidism won't come back. Really wanna keep like a balance within your body so that your mental state doesn't go all out of whack. It's just, it is not fun, guys. So let me tell you some of the symptoms I had and some of the ones that I'm left with after the fact. So back when my hyperthyroidism was really bad, it really, really affected my body and it really, really affected my mental state. Now, with hyperthyroidism and Graves' disease, when you read up on it, the most common thing that is talked about is the person can't put on weight. That's essentially hyperthyroidism. So in my situation, it was I couldn't gain weight. Not only could I not gain fat, but I also couldn't gain muscle. And a lot of people would put me down for that. A lot of people would say to me, you're too skinny. This includes family. This includes friends. This includes acquaintances. Eat more. You look unhealthy. All these things. And let me just insert something into here because I think this is so important. In today's day and age, people really, really like to comment on other people's bodies. I steer clear of that altogether. I will not comment on someone else's body because you don't know what they're going through. You don't know what the hardships are. You don't know what they're trying to accomplish. And by someone throwing those things at a person who feels attacked when it's totally out of their control, it is not helpful. In fact, it's damaging. And I can say for myself that when family would tell me that I look too skinny, or I need to eat more, or I need to go to the gym and work out and build some muscle, Stephanie, that's really heartbreaking. So without getting too much into that and turning this into some sort of sob story, because that's not what this is about, I wanna tell you that among those common symptoms, there's also some other ones that unfortunately I did also experience. So another one was bulging of my eyes. Thankfully, they're no longer bulging. Back when I was a kid, whenever I was talking and engaging with other people, I would always you know, open my eyes for expression and things like that, which would make them appear larger. But with Graves' disease, especially many, many years ago, I had the protruding eyes. And if you look up Graves' disease protruding eyes, you'll see some some very you know interesting pictures on that but that was really hard for me because i was modeling back then and even when i would look straight into a camera one eye would be very noticeably bigger than another eye one eye would be more closed the other eye would be open and it was like that for a long time i don't even know how long but every day like that was really challenging um it was hard for me to look at people straight on even but honestly even at the side like i remember being on this side modeling especially and looking over at the camera and then seeing the pictures after and noticing that my one eye was much larger than my other eye and it was just 
it was so devastating, guys. Like, uh, that's something that like you can't. It's so hard to explain how that sucked. <laughs> Like it's on your face, everyone sees your face and everyone sees your eyes. I had that for a couple of years and there were times when it was really bad and then there was times where it would get better, but it wasn't perfect. Finally, I can say like after going into remission many, many years later and where I am today after working on myself, eating more healthy and doing all the things I could to like balance my body, balance my mind, finally my eyes are equal. That's all I wanted. I just wanted equal eyes. I didn't care what size they were. I didn't care if they were tiny. didn't care if they were huge. I just wanted them to be equal. So finally, they are equal and they don't protrude out of my head. So thank you, God. <laughs> Another symptom and the whole reason I created this channel was I experienced major hair loss. I think I already told you guys, but when I was a child, I had really nice hair. I had beautiful locks. It was very long. It was very blonde. It was really, really pretty. I loved my hair as a kid. And when you have that much hair, you don't really think about, oh, what if I lose it one day? You don't think about those things. So I got my disease. Um, my hair just essentially over time like kept falling out and it would not come back in. And then the hair that I did have on my head, it was just really thin. <sighs> So that, that was devastating. That was also really devastating. Um, I remember waking up and having a lot of hair on my pillow. I remember when I showered, my hair would come out in clumps. I remember every time I brushed my hair, a lot of hair would come out more than what is normal. Okay, so this isn't like you run the hairbrush through and you get like a few hairs. No, this was like clumps. And I remember telling friends and family about this, my hair loss, and having them say, try Rogaine, try oils, try a different shampoo, try a different conditioner, like do all these things, eat better, eat this, it'll make your hair grow. Try this, it'll make your hair grow. You gotta put this on your head. You gotta use this heat massaging cap and you have to go see someone and they'll make your hair grow. Like. <laughs> Every single thing that is out there, I have probably tried. Because for me, that was one of the most important things to me. Besides my eyes, it was my hair that really, really began to bother me. So that's when I got into clip-in extensions. That's what I started with. Then I got into the tape and extensions, but then my hair kept getting thinner. And then eventually you could see the tapes through the hair and the clip-ins couldn't clip onto enough hairs. And then I tried toppers and then the toppers didn't look natural because this is like many years ago, back when you didn't know where to buy them. There wasn't much advertising yet. Not a lot of people wore them yet. So like, where do you go? Who do you talk to? YouTube with these awesome influencers and reviewers didn't really exist when I was looking for them. When I really needed them, they were not there. So it was really a challenging time. When I got into wigs, it was also a challenging time because I knew that I wanted to cover my whole head with alternative hair because that's what was gonna solve my problem. But I didn't know where to go. I didn't know who to talk to. I didn't know what was good, what was bad, what, like what is a lace front? Do I need to glue the wig on? If I do, like what's what, what, what products do I use? If I don't glue the wig on, do I use a wig grip? Then I tried all these wig grips. Then all of these ones hurt my head. And then I tried these wigs. I actually started with a wig whose lace was really, really dark. It was meant for someone with a darker skin tone than I had. So that was the first wig I ever had and I wore that out and people didn't say anything to me, but I knew it didn't look totally natural and you could also see the lace. So when it comes to wigs, I've definitely like been through the ringer. Also, I was in the modeling world for many, many years. I modeled when I was a child and then growing up, I continued that. And that's actually why Dan and I moved out to Toronto was for modeling. And I really, really love to model. I still do love modeling because it's a way of like expressing yourself and becoming all these different, you could call them characters or whatever. And it's essentially a sales job. So you're selling clothes, you're selling products. And it was just really fun because you could stand behind brands that you believed in and you could help others. But the challenge was my wigs and the challenge behind that was the stigma. 
And that is something with this channel that I want to squish. You can be a confident woman and wear wigs. You can be a confident woman and not have any hair and choose not to wear wigs. It's totally your call. And I think the industry and I think people in general just need to be more open to the fact that women and men and those who are struggling with something is going to do something for themselves to like fix the issue or make themselves feel better to bring that confidence back. And luckily for me, I have found that in wigs wigs have changed my life. I will never stop wearing wigs because they are easier to put on in the morning than doing my own hair. They look gorgeous all the time. I save money. I don't go to a hair salon. The color's always extraordinary. It doesn't grow out. It's not like I have to go to the salon every two weeks. I can change up my style. I can change up the color whenever I want. And best part is at nighttime. I can go and take it off my head, crawl into bed, and feel free and feel light and not have extensions poking at my head. Like, it's just, wigs are amazing. And if you're someone who's new to wigs, I would highly suggest you give them a go. Or if you're someone who's struggling with hair loss, or maybe you have Graves' disease, maybe you have hyperthyroid and your hair is thinning, maybe try a topper or if you're feeling brave and courageous enough, try a wig. Because I swear to you, when you plop a wig on your head that is made for you or suited to you and is the right style, the right color for your skin tone, the lace melts into your skin, you're not gonna look back. You're not gonna wanna wear normal hair anymore. You're not gonna wanna go through those styling issues. I swear to you. So if you like wig content, please consider subscribing to this channel because I am all things wigs on here. And if you learned something from this video, please hit that like button. I would personally love for a lot of people to see this video, especially those who maybe have Graves disease or have hair loss issues and just don't wanna feel so alone. I'm hoping this video can help them. Thank you so much for tuning in to Wigs with Steph. I'm Steph and I'll see you next time.